Clear backpacks, security screenings, metal detectors, active shooter drills, the term active shooter itself. Those are just some of the things that have taken places of prominence in American education next to reading, writing, and arithmetic post-Columbine. It's changed in so many different ways. It's changed from the law enforcement perspective. Ed Clark is the retired director of school security for the Montgomery County Public Schools. Prior to Columbine, I'm a retired Montgomery County police officer as well. We waited until the SWAT team would get to those critical incidents before making entry. He says now the protocol is different and more direct. We're not waiting. We're going in. We're going in there to try to identify where that threat stream is to children and staff and to neutralize that threat stream as safely and as quickly as we can. Some jurisdictions have integrated response where they'll send geared up paramedics and with entry teams to render critical first aid quickly when needed. School policing has come a long way from the occasional visit from Officer Friendly. Well-trained school resource officers that are there that are on these school campuses, they would be the immediate response. They would also have direct communication with other law enforcement officers coming to that event. The roles of students and school staff have changed as well. Most of us are familiar with fire drills, and some can remember the duck and cover drills of the Cold War era. Now there are active shooter drills. Practice really is helpful, but we do that in an age-appropriate way, not to raise the level of anxiety of students, or to maybe re-trigger some emotions that they had. Maybe they had a bad experience. One thing that is part of the aftermath of Columbine is that schools are no longer the safe harbor from the threat of societal ills. But as that's changed, so has the vigilance needed to minimize and eliminate the threat. The preemptive arrest this week of a Wooten High School student who threatened to attack that school and an elementary school is an example. The Maryland Safe to Learn Act. In that act, every public school in the state of Maryland must have a behavioral threat assessment team. So if students may be on a pathway of targeted violence, we can hopefully intervene. There have been shortfalls. Uvalde comes to mind. But even that situation reinforces the newer protocols of addressing the threat as soon as possible and not waiting. Taken as a whole, there's been a sea change in the way school security is handled. Technology, training, and preparation are the tools marshaled against a new and emerging threat. And we want to put more tools in the safety and security toolbox so we can be as safe as we can to respond appropriately and quickly and to save lives. Derek Ward, News 4. Now, if you or someone you know is in need of mental health resources, go to NBCWashington.com and search Changing Minds.